Today we're going to be exploring Zorin OS, specifically 17.2. It's been a little bit since I've checked this Linux distribution out, but I'm excited about this release, so I want to go a little bit more in depth with this one. Now one thing I wanted to let you know right off the bat is that Zorin has a few additions. It has a Pro Edition, including a Core Edition and an Education Edition. For most people and for basic use, the Core Edition is free to download and use. You also have the Educational Edition, which is for students and schools. So you can also check this out. And if you want to get a comparison of the various editions, well, you can see that Pro here comes with premium desktop layouts, including a Windows 11, Windows Classic, Chrome OS, and Mac OS layout. This is one of the biggest reasons people use Zorin OS, and I'm an advocate for as well. It's a great place for Linux beginners to start as an alternative to Windows because of the layout. The user interface here in Zorin OS mimics Windows or Mac OS closely, making users who are first coming over from one of those two platforms at home, which is important. It also comes with a lot of pre-installed software that cater to your everyday needs, including a smooth user experience, a polished interface, so when you first install Zorin 17.2, you can start the tour and a new improvement in Zorin OS 17 is that you have a new launch menu that allows you to search for apps and find shortcuts more easily. The search index has been improved. We go on to the next thing, which is one of the reasons a lot of people like to use Zorin is their appearance. So you can change the layout and style of everything. We can also get our accounts linked up, even our phone linked up with Zorin Connect and start launching and using software from their software center. With all that, we can always visit the help page and their community is pretty great. And I'm gonna start using Zorin and showing you some of those features that we just got to see on the tour. Since this is a new install, it's asking me if I wanna update the current software on Zorin OS 17. I'm gonna remind myself later to do it, but I first wanna cover some of the new things that have landed in 17.2, including one of the most important things. If we launch Zorin Appearance, it is now more customizable than ever because there are additional theming options. If we go to theme, we can select the other tab and now we have a cursor option. This allows us to select which type of default cursor that we want and you can tell how it changes. So Iowata is the default one. Although interestingly enough, when I do click Iowata, I got it to mess up once by not switching over. As you can tell, there seems to be a little bit of a bug there. That's something new that's come in from 17.2, but what's more important is how to install third-party themes. You're not just stuck with the themes that come default with the system anymore. Instead, there is an install third-party themes option, which allows you to install cursor themes, icon themes, and even desktop themes from Pling.com. This is a very easy article to follow and update your Zorin OS distro so that you can get more cursors, icon sets, or overall themes. There's also a new Windows section that's available, which allows you to easily organize window placement behavior, how to focus between windows, and even how tiling works. With advanced tiling options, you can set key bindings as well as adjust gaps and what those key bindings do. Another new feature in the interface section, we can now use overlay scroll bars, which from what I understand allows you just to see the scroll bar at all times. That way you know that you can scroll up and down. Before the scroll bar only emerged whenever you hovered over it, it's nice for people who are used to just seeing a scroll bar there. We get the latest LibreOffice suite as well and better security, compatibility, and performance improvements with Zorin OS 17.2 because it's the same version of the latest kernel that's in Ubuntu 24.04, which are great quality of life improvements. So let's get into the desktop environment here and get into more of a review. Can you use this as a Linux alternative to Windows? Well, let's check it out. First off, those of you who want to upgrade Zorin OS, you can easily do this now with the Upgrade Zorin OS desktop application. Without having to reinstall Zorin in order to actually make a distribution upgrade, you can now use this application that they've created. This is a very welcomed improvement in Zorin 17. And you can see that there are available upgrades, including upgrading to the Education Edition, if you mistakenly took the core, or if you want to upgrade to the Pro Edition at some point, you can check out what you gain with this by hitting Learn More and then seeing what you'll unleash with the Pro Edition, which I'm going to show you these layouts in a little bit because it's probably one of the biggest things you get with Zorin OS Pro, but you can simply hit the Upgrade button to get access. Again, it does cost money for that one, and Core works very well for me, so I usually just stick with that. GNOME, which is the default desktop environment that they've built upon, 
here has been updated. You can tell by seeing the rounded edges all across the varying different shells and taskbar pop-ups. We have options like wired and wireless connection settings, whether or not we want to switch between the dark mode, turn on nightlight or set power settings, increase or decrease your volume, take a screenshot, look at settings, log in, log out and restart the computer. On the right hand side, you also have access to notifications and a calendar and weather information if you set that up. On the left hand side, we have the start menu and with Zorin being one of my favorite distributions, although it is lacking in some areas, which I'm going to discuss a little bit later, many people go over to Zorin OS to be comfortable with the transition between windows due to its familiar interface and ease of use. Notice it does feel a bit like Windows, especially when you're comparing it to something like Windows 10. And we have this button here, which actually indicates that we have multiple workspaces. If you want, you can either swipe right over to the next workspace to start a new one or go right back to an additional one. Doesn't really matter, but it is really easy to switch. There's also a shortcut. I believe it's the super key here in order to do the same thing and launch the current workspaces. So applications have definitely gotten updated as well because we are using GNOME 43 on here. Now, some of the applications definitely got an update. That's because we're on GNOME 43.9. So things are looking very sleek with the redesign in GNOME, including a light theme that you can change the accents on. Moving on, double tapping the super key, we can get to the applications. We can also scroll over and select whatever app that we want. And also up top, something very nice is that you can select between your varying different workspaces as well in this. So I actually like using this more than the workspaces view. I think it's just a little easier to do. Now, something that's nice about the workspaces view is the fact that you can select an app directly from the workspaces view and put it into focus without actually having to move things around or minimize. Let me show you what I mean. If I'm just minimize everything here and then I launch the workspaces view, the workspace that I'm currently working on shows me everything that is currently up, even though that it is currently minimized. So you don't see what you're seeing in your workspace. Instead, you see everything that is in the background of your workspace which I think is a fantastic thing because sometimes you can get lost. And if you click on something, it'll bring it right back up for you. Making it a more unified view here in Zorin. Another very important feature is if we go to the start bar, I'm gonna go back to that app called Zorin Appearance. And by launching that app, we still have multiple layouts available to us. You can change these on the fly and even get more desktop layouts. Of course, if you scroll down, you'll see this by upgrading Zorin OS Pro. They really push for that. If you like some of the other desktop layouts or experiences, you can give it a shot here as well. By simply just clicking on one, you can see how much the desktop can change up. We can see the dock move to the middle and we have less options to the left. Show applications becomes the center of attention here, but I do like the default one, which has a start menu or bar, including a taskbar at the bottom, app icons on the left-hand side and the workspaces view and a couple other taskbar items on the right-hand side. A lot of us work with multiple desktops. So one nice thing is you can actually move apps between desktops and workspaces. So notice I just moved both my Finder window and my Firefox window over to a second workspace, which automatically opens up a third one as well. Up top, when you get multiple, you'll also be able to switch pretty easily by just clicking on the top workspaces. I'm actually gonna put these back and then we'll see that we lose that third workspace and now we only have the two available and all the applications go back to the first workspace. You can also search directly from here. So let's say I wanted to search for Zorin Appearance or Zorin Upgrade or Zorin Connect. I can easily search up top. I don't have to be searching directly at the bottom here. I'll tell you that the store did get overhauled. And if you're still in Zorin 16, it might be a reason you want to upgrade in order to get a better experience installing your applications and using this new updated store. It might be well worth it for you. Now, I mentioned briefly window tiling. If you do something like super left arrow, you can notice how the tiling mode gets activated and it tiles the window currently focused over to the left. Then it asks, which other window do you wanna tile on the right? I'm just gonna put Firefox here on the right and you'll notice how that mode works. Currently no gaps are set. Now, if I wanted to just maximize one single window for you keyboard users out there, you can do super up arrow and that will maximize a window. Super down arrow will pull it out of the maximize mode. And then again, I can do super right arrow if I wanna pull it back on the right hand side or super left arrow and choose another application. I do like the tiling support here, especially if you're a keyboard user like me and don't wanna to spend too much time using 
the mouse where you can avoid it. It's great for people like us. It's a unique feature that's been added to Zorin OS and I think more Linux distributions really need to add it in. My favorite one though is of course the Cosmic version of all that, a different desktop. I do have a in-depth review of the newest Cosmic Rust desktop experience. If you wanna check that out as well, check it out right after this video. And now that we've explored the desktop a little bit, let's talk about premium desktop layouts. This is a Zorin OS Pro feature. There are multiple different layouts available in the Pro edition, including a Mac OS-like one, a Windows Classic one, which we're currently using. Mind you, it's a little bit different, but not too far off. But for a lot of users who are using Windows 11 and you're coming in from an environment like this, the Pro Edition actually has the closest layout to that. You don't get that automatically, but you can see what that layout looks like here. Other ones include Chrome OS-like, Gnome 2-like, and Ubuntu-like. It's really hard to actually tell a difference in some of these, but the Pro Edition does add on top of the standard layout desktops, including the Windows-like Touch, Windows List-like, Gnome Shell-like. But again, I've gotten away mainly with using Zorin Core. And if you wanna support the project or you need support or help, I do suggest taking a look at Zorin Pro, but I don't think you personally need it unless you're really struggling or you absolutely need a layout that was featured. Take a moment to like the video if you haven't already, and don't forget to subscribe below if you like content like this. Okay, so I'm gonna restart things and we're gonna get into what kind of resource usage is being utilized here in Zorin OS 17.2. But a couple feedback things, maybe they could include enhancements in technologies, including using Pipewire for their default audio driver. And the only other thing I'd say to consider is a more frequent release cycle that aligns with new Ubuntu versions as well. And not a limitation to just the long-term support additions, hopefully getting more kernel updates. There's my quick feedback, and with this restart, I'm going to log in. This is what the login page looks like, and now we can check out the resource usage. I'm gonna show you this through HTOP in a terminal. With the system only being up for about three minutes, we see the CPUs hovering around zero to two percent. The memory usage is around 1.1 gigs, which is kind of on the larger side of things when it comes to desktop environments and memory. Again, not a big deal. It is using GNOME 43 here. There is 112 tasks, 257 threads, with many processes running here in the background. And then we're gonna check out system information so you can get an idea of the kernel and more information. We're gonna use NeoFetch for this one. So this is Zorin OS 17.2, like I mentioned. It's actually using kernel version 6.8. I got that wrong earlier. I believe I said 6.6. .6. There's 1,922 source packages and 12 flat packs. This has actually gone down over the last couple of versions of Zorin, which is nice to see. It's using Bash Shell 5.1. The desktop environment is still GNOME 43.9. This is being emulated on an AMD 7 3700X series processor, and we're currently using around 1.9 gigabytes of memory out of eight gigs. Now some questions for you. Would you still consider this a great desktop environment for beginners transitioning over to Linux? What do you think about the stability of Zorin? I haven't had many issues other than running a little short on updates. I definitely like the idea behind Zorin and trying to get a Windows-like user experience for people transitioning over to Linux. I hope you enjoyed this review of Zorin. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.